2000s, social media has become the Facebooks, the MySpaces, and the Twitter, as well as so many others. These are the tools, the technology, and the applications that now facilitate virtual and interactive communication and real-time content exchange. Clay Sharkey in his book, Cognitive Surplus, discusses this phenomenon. That social media and media is not something that we uh, consume, but something that we use the collective and connective tissue of society that brings us together in our daily lives. Social media is not an alternative to reality, but it's a part of it. And increasingly, the connective uh, mechanism for events in the physical world. How many people are tweeting right now? Everybody. <laughs> the hashtag today is TEDxNOLA, by the way. Social media now enables us, as I just proved, proved, to really share information and collaborate in ways that we've never really been able to do before. The FEMA administrator Craig Fugate discusses this phenomenon at the Red Cross social, Emergency Social Data Summit in DC a couple weeks ago, saying that as social media becomes more a part of our daily lives, people are turning into it in emergencies as well. So it's the responsibility of the federal, state, and local officials to truly leverage these technologies and bring the public in, because without them, they won't be successful. Social media has proven consistently helpful in disasters, and we've seen this in a variety of, of events. In Virginia Tech, students turned to instant messaging and MySpace to share information and to communicate when official sites went down. And during the Haiti earthquake, citizens used twi uh, Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace to call for help, to share information, to organize volunteer efforts, and to direct resources to where they were needed most. And in the oil spill, organizations like Crisis Commons and CU Boulder and Ushahidi developed apps enabling citizens to report instances of oil throughout the Gulf Coast as they found them. And had social media been as advanced as it is today, imagine what we could have done in the days and weeks following Katrina. So now, armed with the lessons that we've learned, what if instead of using this technology only in disasters, we used it today to organize and to communicate with each other in a coordinated way and to inform and engage our citizens? What if instead of turning to it in disasters, we used it now to collaborate, to build a community that's resilient? What if instead of turning to this social media that allows us to engage and to participate in times of disaster, we used it today in a grassroots effort, a coordinated consortium of partners representing all fields, sectors, and entities of community, collaborating and communicating in preparedness, response, and recovery, this network of networks, micro teams dedicated to the same cause, even as focused on different issues, a social resilience infrastructure, working together to build a community that's truly resilient, and if necessary, to lead each other through the next disaster and maintain the, unique, the uniqueness of, of New Orleans. Social media can be used in all aspects of disaster planning. For mitigation, social media can be used in all of the community to identify the key elements of its political, social, and cultural infrastructures that need to be maintained for the community to remain vibrant, and a platform from which to develop a truly collaborative partnership between the government, private, and nonprofit, and the citizens. And in preparedness, social media can be used to engage all of the community in the planning process and give a voice to those that require additional support. And in response, social media can be used to communicate and coordinate between the government and the public so that everyone is uh, communicating and aware of everything that's going on during a disaster. And in recovery, social media can be used for reconnection and communication and even maintaining a sense of community throughout the event as well. We've already begun to establish the foundation that we need for this endeavor. Organizations like evacuteer.org, working with the city of New Orleans to develop a, con uh, a network of trained citizens and volunteers ready to assist the next evacuation. And broad community connections, working with the citizens of Broad Street and surrounding neighborhoods to foster the, the, the cultural and residential and economic redevelopment of the area. And Sweet Home New Orleans and the New Orleans Musicians Clinic, working with the, uh, the musicians of New Orleans and the cultural groups and the social clubs to really protect their health and well-being, get them on their feet, get them to jobs, and to really revitalize the economy. These, along with so many others, are truly working, to work with, working with their constituents. They know their demographics. And so with social media as a coordinating mechanism, they can communicate with each other and build a community that's resilient to not only recover from the next disaster, but to thrive and to grow stronger.
Social media, however, to be successful must be strategic and leveraged across the entire community and in all phases of the disaster planning life cycle, from mitigation and preparedness to response and recovery. The citizens of New Orleans and the Gulf Coast are no strangers to disaster. But it's not the disaster that defines us. As Dan Baum so aptly wrote on humanbeings.com, our identities are rooted in our neighborhoods and in our communities, our second line clubs and our Mardi Gras crews. We take our culture with us wherever we go. So now, drawing the strength that we gain from our communities and our families and our culture, we can build a community that is strong, that is resilient, and leveraging new technologies and integrating them with traditional means while enhancing the old, the old ways, strategic partnerships and planning, we can build a community that is truly resilient to not just recover, but to thrive and to grow stronger than before. Thank you.